It was made in 1914 by a guy named Herman Hagberg. Uh, he was a sweet, Swedish fiddle maker, but he, he made it in Berkeley, California. And uh, actually, this fiddle has a really cool story. Uh, you know, this is the one I played pretty much my whole life. I was probably around 11 or 12 when I was big enough to hold it. I played a little cigar box when I was three, I think, was the first one, and then they graduate you up, you know, from 32nd size, the 16th size, the quarter, you know, all these different sizes. So I was 11 or 12, I think, when I was old enough to, to hang on to that one, and uh, my dad had had that fiddle sitting around, all you know, since he was about 13 or 14, and he, the way he came into it was, uh, there was a couple down the street, he had, he had uh, I should back up a little bit more, he, he, uh, he used to have this little rat, like little ratty dog, you know, that I don't know, kind of mutt dog that it was that he had. But it was like his best friend, you know, like a really cool dog. And uh, something happened to it, and my grandparents decided it was a good idea that if they got rid of the dog while he was at school and uh, got him a guitar to replace it, <laughs> that he would be all right with that. <laughs> and uh, that was obviously not the case, but. But he did play that guitar every single day because of that, you know, and that was one of the things that stuck to him. And uh, so he obviously was starting to get into music. And this couple down the street, this elderly couple, they, uh, the, the lady played violin in the uh, symphony. And this was in uh, Stockton, California. And uh, so anyway, she had, they had had, you know, some close relations being in a neighborhood. Uh, but. The, the lady got cancer and she ended up passing away. And so the old guy had her fiddle still there. And he knew that my dad played music. And so he just literally one day walked down the street and handed it to him. And uh, then that's the fiddle that, that's here. I've uh, just been carried around. So I thought that was a cool story about it, you know. Um, and it lives on. 100 years this year. I gotta find some cake. Uh, no, no. You know, and, and it's funny because I actually did take a, a, a sizable break from it. I, uh, a guy named Frank Daniels, who's an amazing dude and fiddle maker, uh, built a fiddle for me that I played for about 10 years. Um, and it was awesome. And just one day, I don't know, and then he built me a five string. I played that for a little while as well. A couple of years, I think I did that. And um, I just always felt like, you know, even as good as Frank's stuff was, it just totally didn't really fit me perfectly in my hand, like the response and everything. And uh, so this one sat in the case for probably, you know, 12 or 13 years. And I got it out about five or s four or five years ago now and, and brought it back out and it just fit perfectly. Everything worked exactly like I wanted it to when I was playing it. The response was unbelievable and it still just had this amazing sound. And so I'll never leave it alone again. <laughs>